It's no secret that I love African cichlids. In fact, the foundation, the base of this YouTube channel is probably mostly on my African cichlid content from a long time ago. Even my amazing peacock logo in Alanakara from Lake Malawi is an African cichlid. And so, well, African cichlids can be some of the most exciting, colorful, fun fish in the hobby, and I love them, and a lot of you love them. A lot of them require larger tanks, larger spaces to take care of them larger budgets, and that's great if you have a larger home, if you have a lot of space for it, if you have a bigger budget to, you know, handle all of that, um, that's fine. But if you have a smaller space, an apartment, a bedroom, maybe you're not quite sure if you want to jump into the African cichlid world in the aquarium hobby, um, there is another fish that might be perfect for you, and we're going to talk about that today. Hey fish friends, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Zenzo from Tozawa Tanks. Now before I get into this video, I want to pause right here and thank the sponsor of today's video, Into the AM. Now as many of you have seen in many of my videos where I'm wearing these shirts, I really enjoy them. They're very comfortable, they're very well made, and they have some amazing designs to choose from. So thank you to Into the AM for sponsoring this video. Into the AM is a team of artists and creators that formed an apparel company to share a common vision of developing premium apparel that elevates self-expression while focusing on comfort by using the highest quality materials and eco-friendly inks. Into the AM has dozens of cool designs like this one, this one, this one that glows in the dark, the jellyfish, one of my favorites, this cool lion, and lots of other cool designs, including hats. So if you use the code below, you'll get a 10% discount. Additionally, if you do a bundle of three graphic tees, you'll get them for $55 before the 10% discount. Check out Into the AM in the link below. So thanks again to Into the AM and make sure you check out the link down below to check out their amazing shirts. So anyway, yes, there are some amazing smaller African cichlids that are perfect for smaller aquariums and they're called shell dwellers. Now, the reason I'm standing here and not over there is we have a couple of shell dweller tanks although I'm blocking the view, but we've got a couple of them right here. We've got my multifasciatus tank. We've got my gold ocelatus tank. Um, and shell dwellers are amazing fish. Now you may be wondering, what is a shell dweller? A shell dweller is just that. It's a fish that dwells in shells. So they come from East Africa, from Lake Tanganyika. And in the bottom of Lake Tanganyika, there's a bunch of empty snail shells from over the years. And these fish have adapted to use those shells to protect themselves from predators, to use them as shelters, to, to uh, raise their fry in, spawn and breed in them, etc. cetera. So um, they are amazing little small cichlids. Now, there are a few different types of shell dwellers. We're gonna be talking kind of generally about shell dwellers, not about specific species or breeds. Um, again, I have these two, but there are other ones uh, like uh, Neolamprologus uh, multifasciates, which are these. We've got their similis, which are very similar to the multis. They've got um, just different striping. It goes, it, where these, where they, the, the striping stops at the operculum, which is the plate right here by the gills. On the similis, they go past. Um, there are other ones like uh, Brevis, uh, we talked about Ocelotus, uh, etc. So we're going to kind of generalize here and talk about shell dwellers um, as a category and not go into the specifics on each different one. Um, just do your research on a specific type of shell dweller if you are looking for um, getting into keeping these amazing fish. Hey everyone, I just wanted to jump in real quick as I'm editing this video. Um, I had reached out to uh, Sand City Cichlids. They had sent me some fish before, actually the gold ocelotus that I have. And um, I had just mentioned that I'm gonna be uh, screen recording uh, their website so that I could show people kind of like what other types of shell dwellers are out there. And they said that they were gonna give you guys a discount. So um, I'm not getting a penny from it. There's no affiliate or anything like that, but there is a link down below, it's Tazawa. So 10% uh, discount from Sand City Cichlids. So if you are interested in some of these really cool fish, then check them out. They're really good at shipping. They've got good customer service. I've worked with them before. So um, just wanted to pop, pop this in here and let you guys know that there's a source for shell dwellers if you are looking for some. Now I thought what might be good is for me to kind of talk about why I enjoy keeping them um, what I think are some of their, you know, better characteristics and why I think they might be a good fish for some of you. And then we'll also talk about some of the stuff that's not so great. So 
First of all, a shell dweller is a cichlid. Uh, they're a very small cichlid. Um, and one thing that I enjoy about cichlids is that they have a different kind of behavior. So cichlids are, how would I say this? They have a more of a personality than some other fish. So if you've kept lots of different types of fish before, you might notice that some fish pay more attention to you than others. Some of them um, might interact with other fish differently than others. So um, in my opinion, cichlids are maybe a little bit more intelligent and uh, just I enjoy their behavior overall. The shell dwellers are very feisty, they're digging all the time, so their behavior is really fun. The other great thing about shell dwellers is that they're very hardy. Now cichlids in general are pretty hardy fish, um, but I have found that the shell dwellers seem to be exceptionally hardy and uh, that just makes the fish keeping just much, much more enjoyable. In fact, for me, I would say that probably my shell dwellers are probably the easiest fish that I keep when it comes to you know many different things. And um, it just makes it much, much more enjoyable for me and also a great fish for a lot of people in a lot of different situations. The other great thing about them is that they don't require a lot of space. Now we're gonna get into setting up a tank later, um, but they can be in smaller aquariums. Both of these are not large aquariums. These are 20 gallon aquariums, which is, um, you know, not a large aquarium. It's kind of a medium small aquarium, but you can keep them in smaller tanks. I've kept them in 10 gallon tanks before. I've kept them in 16 gallon tanks before. So um, you do have lots of options there. Another thing about shell dwellers is that they're nice to look at. They, it is a very, uh, they are very good looking fish. Um, now they're not as colorful as other African cichlids, whether they're East or West African. So you're not gonna have the colors of the jewel cichlids from West Africa. You're not gonna have the coloration of you know, the African cichlids from Lake Malawi. You're not gonna see the peacock colors and the Mbuna colors. Um, for the most part, most of the colors are a little bit more muted, um, but still very beautiful. Whether it's the banding, the stripes, the eye color, obviously some of them like the gold ocelotus have kind of a brilliant yellowish gold hue to them. So, um, but regardless, they are a very beautiful, cute, fun fish to look at. Um, they're also very easy to feed. And when I'm thinking about fish to keep, Sometimes I think about how easy is that fish gonna to be to feed. So some fish, like this guy down here, which you can't see, it's difficult to feed. I can only feed it mostly live food or freeze dried food. Very, very picky eater. Where my shell dwellers, flake food, pellet food, granule food, freeze dried food, live food, frozen food, whatever I throw in that tank, it gets consumed and it makes it much more enjoyable. And I think that's also a good reason why a lot of other people can enjoy these fish because they are so easy to feed. And the other thing is, is that they're also a fish that's easy to spawn or to watch them breed, um, whether it's for fun, just to see the circle of life happening in your aquarium and watching your fish create more fish, which is always enjoyable. Or if you are trying to you know, find a fish that you can maybe breed for profit, sell them at your local fish club or something like that, they can be quite profitable for a couple of reasons. One, they are, a little bit more sought after. So if you have a nice example of some shell dwellers and you go to sell them, people are gonna want them. You can make a lot more money from a little fish like this versus something else. So it can be profitable in that regard. And also it doesn't require a lot of space when you're breeding. So you could set up a breeding program with like two or three 10 gallon tanks that don't require very much care, very little equipment, minimal amount of maintenance, and um, you can have a profitable breeding situation in just a couple of small tanks. Now I would be remiss if I didn't tell you a couple things that are not so great about them. And it's a very short list in my opinion. Um, lots of great qualities about them. There's a couple that mm, you might wanna consider before getting into them. Um, one of those is aggression. They can be a little bit more aggressive than other types of fish that are small like this. You may not be able to keep them with other fish, like you wouldn't wanna put them in a community tank, most likely depending on what fish are in there. So they can be a tad, ag a tad aggressive, some more than others. The gold ocelotus, pretty vicious. I put my hand in there to like attack me, doesn't hurt, but uh, were the the the, uh, the multis or the similis a little bit less aggressive. So that's one thing to consider. Something else that is pretty important to consider is if you like having a planted aquarium, if you like having rooted plants, probably not gonna be great with shell dwellers because they are diggers. They are kind of the little miniature Bob the Builders of the aquarium world. They will move substrate around. You might set up the tank to have it look the exact way that you want it with the substrate all flat or sloped or whatever. You come back in a few hours and you're gonna have mounds and little divots and shells that are buried and shells that are moved around. So 
they're going to set up the tank the way that they want it, not the way that you want it. And if you have rooted plants, unless that plant's been in there for a long time and super established with lots of long, deep roots that are really holding on, it's probably not going to work and you're probably going to have floating plants at some point. So those are a couple things to consider before jumping into shell dwellers. Now let's talk a little bit about setting up a shell dweller tank. And before I do, I just want to mention that uh, I, I helped author an article. So I for those of you that don't know, I work for Aquarium Co-op and on the Aquarium Co-op website, we have a section where we've got a lot of very educational and interesting blog articles on lots of different topics. And I recently helped write an article on shell, dweller, shell, shell dwellers and how to set up a tank. So I will put a link down below for that so you can go down and check that out. And uh, it'll kind of tell you step by step what to do and explain things in a little bit more detail that maybe I didn't get into in this video. So uh, I'll make sure that that's linked below. But um, anyway, the first thing that you want to do, obviously, is you want to figure out what tank size you're going to have. And uh, then you can kind of go from there. Now, when it comes to tank size, again, these are small fish that don't require a lot of space. And depending on the ones that you keep, you could go as small as 10 gallons, as I've shared. I've kept them in tens. I kept them in this tank before, which you may or may not be able to see, but a 16 gallon. So not a very large tank. Um, you can keep them in 20 highs like these. Uh, probably the ideal tank is going to be a 20 long. And the reason why a 20 long is good is that it has... Uh, more length, right? So um, you're, you're going to get a, f a few more inches of space, floor space, which is what's most important with shell dwellers. Tall tanks, it doesn't matter. Um, the more space on the floor of the aquarium is going to be most important. So 20 long is probably the most ideal starting shell dweller tank. Um, obviously 29 gallons would work because it's the same footprint, but taller. And then if you, if you go bigger, then of course that's going to be easier, right? 40 breeders and 55s and all that kind of stuff. Um, larger aquariums are going to give you more space. I have some upstairs in my 60 gallon display tank, which is essentially a 55 gallon tank, but a little bit taller. So, um, but mostly you want, you want to be thinking about floor space when you're picking out your tank. So whatever tank you choose, the more space on the bottom, the better. The most important thing when it comes to setting up your African cichlid, uh, your shell dweller tank is going to be lots and lots of shells. So shell dwellers need shells, period. So that means that you're gonna to have to somehow source shells. The good thing is that they are very, very easy to get. All you need to do is go to Amazon, find some extra large escargot shells. They're really inexpensive for like a bag of, I don't know, three dozen in a bag, I think. I don't know, I'll put a, I'll put a picture up here. But I just buy them on Amazon for a few bucks. I buy a big bag of them and you know clean them off. Uh, you, some, you might want to boil them or whatever, but they are food grade. They are shells that are made for restaurants to put escargot into so people can eat them. So they are food grade shells, safe to go into your aquarium. So rinse them off, clean them off, whatever you want to do, put them in the aquarium. You might need to uh, do this with the shell, dip it, flip it um, to get the air out. I, Maybe I'll put some B-roll and I'll show you what that looks like. But you just want to make sure that when you put the shells in the in the aquarium, that you turn them around so that the air that's trapped inside the snail shell gets out and the shell won't float. It'll sink down, which is what you want. So lots of shells, probably three to four shells per fish. Your initial, you know, your initial batch. So if you're gonna start off with a you know, like a colony of like six starters, like if you get six multis, for example. You're going to want, you know, at least 18 to 24 shells in there so that every fish has a couple, three, four shells to kind of claim as their own and pick out their own. And the males will end up kind of hoarding a few and kind of having that as their area. So the other thing that's really important is uh, having the right substrate. So I would recommend kind of a sandy substrate, depending on where you live, it will depend on that type of substrate. So they do require some more alkaline water. So that means that uh, the water is going to be harder uh, and a higher pH. So um, I have the high pH here, but I have soft water. So I always use aragonite. Um, or crushed coral. So I've got crushed coral in this one right here. I've got aragonite in this one. Ideally, I would use aragonite everywhere because it's a little bit more of like a sand uh, texture, like a coarse sand. Then they, they have a fine aragonite as well. Um, you can usually find that like in the reef section in a lot of aquarium stores. Um, so you want to have like a sandy substrate so that they can dig and move it around, which is ideal for them. Um, but you also want that 
crushed coral or aragonite uh, quality because that's going to help buffer the aquarium and keep the water parameters where you where uh, where they should be. So again, higher pH, more alkaline, uh, harder water in that crushed coral slash uh, aragonite substrate is going to help. Now, if you do have live in an area where you don't have um, issues with soft water, you have liquid rock or hard water coming out of the tap, then you can just use sand and that would be just fine. Um, you can also use decorations like large pieces of coral or dry rock. And I've got that in a couple of my, uh, couple of these are like larger pieces of coral as well. And that will also help uh, with the buffering. The other thing that I would recommend in setting up uh, a, a shell dweller tank is having some kind of line of sight break. I don't really have it in this aquarium and it's been okay. Uh, I do have it in my upstairs aquarium and I do have it in this aquarium. And basically a line of sight break is some rocks or a rock that's in the middle of the aquarium. So imagine that this is an, an aquarium and you've got a bunch of shells right here. If you have a male here and a male here and they are all trying to get their little harem of females, if they see each other and they might start like fighting with each other and they're not going to hurt each other really, but they'll be bickering and fighting and getting picked on. But if you have like a rock or some decoration or something in between, then it's less likely for them to see, hey, that guy's in my space. They're going to just worry about their own little corner of the tank and not try to dominate the whole tank. So that would be very helpful. Um, as far as plants, I would do anything that's either a floating plant. So I do floating plants uh, or like plants that are attached to a rock or something like that. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about the digging part, which we talked about. So other than that, they are very easy fish to care for. In fact, as I shared, they're some of the easiest fish that I've kept before uh, or currently keep. Um, meaty diet, again, feeding them is easy. The flake food, the pellet food, uh, the frozen, the dry, the live, all that kind of stuff. Now, if you do want to breed them, um, I am going to give you a couple of tips. So if you're breeding for fun and you just want to like have them spawn in your aquarium, then just set up the aquarium the way I described, put in like six or so, five or six, They'll hopefully you'll have, you know, a good ratio of males to females. Usually when you have at least five fish, you've got like a 97% chance of having at least a male or female in there. So um, put in a group of five or six, give them quality, quality water, shells, places to hide, leave them alone. They're going to spawn. If you want to breed for profit, then I would say set up uh, maybe a couple of aquariums, uh, like maybe a couple 10 gallons just to start with, or you can even start with like one tank as an example. But instead of shells, you're not going to want to use shells if you're breeding for profit because they are very hard to get out of the shell. When a shell dweller goes in the shell, if they want to, they'll go back and kind of wedge themselves in that shell until they're ready to come out. So um, you're going to want to use like a PVC elbow. Let me grab one real quick. I feel like this is where we need to put a few moments later from SpongeBob because it was, I was gone a long time. Probably not in editing. Few moments later. Anyway, so I grabbed a few uh, different uh, PVC pieces here. Um, and this one is a three quarter inch PVC. This one is, I think it's half inch PVC. Um, something like that. So anyway, you want to just get some PVC elbows like this. And you can get them at the hardware store for, you know, you can get a few for a few bucks. They're not that expensive. And then you want to either have like a cap or a plug. So you can see on this one that it's uh, plugged up. And then you could also, whoop, I dropped one. You could also get like a cap and put a cap on the end. You just need to like get, get a, get a uh, connecting piece of PVC, cut it short and put the cap on it. And the reason why you want to do this is if you are breeding for profit, getting them out of the shells, very, very difficult. There are some tricks that you can do, but if you are breeding them for profit, you can just take out the elbow. And even if that fish is still in there, you just pop out the plug and it'll flush right out. So that way you can, you know, scoop up. You know, what I used to do is I used to just take my net, scoop up the PVC elbows, and then like in a bucket of water, just pop these open and they would swim out into the water. So very, very easy to catch. It's almost too easy with these things. So if you're breeding for profit, use PVC elbows. Don't use shells because it won't be so fun. So that's it. Overall, just a fun, fun African cichlid to keep. Very easy to keep. Um, they don't require a lot of maintenance, uh, a lot of space. Uh, you would care for them like any other freshwater aquarium. Nothing really special. Uh, they're also really great as like a classroom tank. So I know teachers have you know put them in their classroom before because it's interesting to see the behavior with the shells. 
great for families if you want to get your children into into aquariums or get them excited about it. Um, they're fun that way. Don't forget to check out that article that I talked about. It's very explanatory and hopefully that will give you some help. Um, and there's a lot of other great uh, articles there as well. Um, don't forget to check out Into the AM. Thank them for being the sponsor by getting some really cool shirts from them or get a shirt from them. Um, and then also don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. That's all I had for now. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.